Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. Brought to you by Strange Creative Studio. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, founder of Strange, Alex Pitt. Hello, everyone. How are we? I have accidentally sent myself into a bit of a rage while I've been typing up the episode notes. I, not even for actually the thing that I want to talk to you about, just for the intro, just for, just for the fucking segue. I'm mad. I'll tell you why. I was looking the other day. I swear this is relevant. Always, always comes back to business. So I was looking for a song the other day. You know, when you do that thing, we've all done it, where you hear a little snippet of a song and you think, oh, that's a banger. I like the sound of that. Didn't shazam it in time. I didn't get there in time. So had to improvise. Now I heard this song on Radio One. Used to be my favourite radio station ever, but such is the progression. If you know the Peep Show quote, then you know (laughs) that you can't listen to Radio One forever because... It caters for the youth, right? It's not for old ladies like me. But I heard this little clip and I thought, oh, I'll have a a quick look through the top 40. See if if it's any of those. Well, my loves, what in the sweet gobshite are the youth listening to today? Oh my fucking God, I have never heard such a crock of shite in my 33 and a half years on this earth. It's just, like, it's just one song. It's the same fucking drum beat. It's the same generic lady's voice. And you know what they've all fucking done? Can you tell I'm mad about this? What they've all done is they've gone back to the 70s, 80s and 90s where people wrote actual music and they've taken little clips and then they fucking destroyed them. They've stripped out all the good bits, all of the instruments, (laughs) all of the personality, all of the uniqueness and the layers and just the fucking artistry that's gone into them. And they've just put a boom boom, boom, over the top. It all sounded the fucking same. And it, it upset me. I'm not going to lie, it upset me. I didn't find the song I was looking for either. Can't even remember what it sounds like now. So that's a small tragedy on its own. Now, as much as that sent me into a raving fury, it did inspire me to talk to you about what I'm going to talk to you about today. And that thing is that there are no new ideas. There are no new ideas. I know that sounds like a bad thing, but stay with me, my darlings. It's not that bad. It's actually quite a big positive. If you are trying to make your way in business, if you're trying to build that raving fan base that I talk about all the time, if you're trying to find your people, you know, build your cult, it's actually quite good news. Especially if you are the sort of person who, and I used to be the sort of person before I nailed the brand, before I built Strange, before I did all of this kind of like background work into working out what my kind of brand was. I used to really struggle with coming up with content ideas, right? I used to struggle with coming up with products. I used to struggle in general with what to put out there, how to stay in the forefront of people's minds. And one of the things that I really struggled with was that I was always trying to come up with new, innovative things to say, brand new products that have never existed before. And when I say products, I mean... I've had product based businesses in the past, but when I've been trying to teach and educate on what I teach and educate on, I was trying to find really, really unique unicorn things that no one had spoken about before. And I fell flat on my ass. I really struggled. Now, the reason for that I realise now is that you and anybody else would be in the vast minority if you create something that's never been created before. That, in the year that we live in, in the year that I'm recording this in 2023, is very rare. A lot of things have already been done. And yet there are new things being created every day. That's because the very nature of creativity, of creating things, doesn't necessarily mean that you're creating something that's never existed before. What it really means is that instead of generating new ideas, new products, you are recreating things that already existed and filtering them through your lens for other people to consume. Now I know that that all sounds slightly complicated. So let me explain by way of a few examples. Now it might shock you to learn that I did some proper heavy research for this episode. I didn't mean to, but I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole 
as a result, I've actually learned quite a lot of things myself today <laughs> that I'm going to share with you because I feel like I'm back in school. And also, I've learned some really good facts in case these ever come up in a pub quiz. So the first thing I learned was that Darwin wasn't the first person to come up with a theory of evolution. What? Loads of people probably already know this, but I didn't know this, so it blew my mind. So Charles Darwin, we all know, theory of evolution, kind of a big deal, that dude. Apparently, some other fella, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, proposed an early theory in the early 19th century. Way ahead of the game, that fella. But Darwin went off, he did a lot of research, he was on the Galapagos for a while, he got a shit ton of evidence and put it together with all of his observations in different ways, and that supported the whole idea, right? That gave it a bit of a leg up. Massive, massive understatement, I realise. <laughs> the internet, apparently, was knocking about in the 60s. The idea of there being a decentralised network of computers communicating with one another that was around in the 60s from multiple people. But then the internet that we actually know today is decades and decades of refinements by scientists, by engineers. And then good old Tim Berners-Lee steps in, some user-friendly browsers get involved, and all of a sudden, we're all on fucking TikTok 24 hours a day. <laughs> the printing press, another one, apparently, was knocking about in Asia and Korea in the 15th century. Gutenberg comes in, creates a system that's more efficient, more scalable, makes it so that you can print books faster in a more reliable way. Now, apologies for forcing a history lesson down your necks on a business podcast. <laughs> but the point that I'm making is that most people are out there saying things that have been said a hundred times before, minimum. <laughs> Pretty much everything I teach you on this podcast are things that I've learned from other people. They're concepts that I've learned through reading, through learning, through consuming information from other people. And this is the case, not just in business, but for so many things, for so many industries. Like if you look at fashion, the term twist on a classic is used everywhere. If you look at the Cambridge Satchel Company and the fact that they made their name with neon colored versions of a little messenger bag that was popular decades before, the founder took an old bag that she had from when she was a kid, twisted it up, changed it, interpreted it how she wanted, and then put it back out into the world to make it fresher and more relevant. And on that subject, fashion in general, you'd think there were only so many ways that you could redesign a skirt or a tie or a jacket. And yet there are so many fashion brands out there churning out so many items and people are consuming them and people will only consume from specific brands. Now I know that I am an absolute fiend for ranting about branding. <laughs> like I say, most people are out there saying things that have been said a hundred times before. Most people are buying things that have existed in different forms a hundred times before. But people will buy from you because they like your brand. That's what draws them in. Like I say, I teach business advice that I have learned myself from others. You realistically can go off and get similar lessons, if you like, from other people who are doing what I do on the internet. But the feedback that I get from people who listen to this podcast and who buy from me and who want to work with me is that they like the way I present that information. They like the filter that I put it through. I use storytelling. I use humour. I use foul fucking language. I'm a bit silly. Those are my brand traits. I like to feel it's strong and it draws people in. Or it will completely repel them and they'll leave me alone. Either way, it's a fantastic filtration system. <laughs> Don't get caught up trying to reinvent the wheel. You can find a way to take everything that you know, everything that you've seen, filter it through your own lens and create something really fucking cool that people are gonna want. All right, darlings, I'm gonna go put on a bit of mellow magic to recover. Have a wonderful week and I'll catch you here next time.